Hey, it's the Steel Lodge, and today we're looking at RPCS3, a PS3 emulator that runs on the Steam Deck. Now, the version I'm using was installed via EmuDeck, and if you're curious how to install EmuDeck, I have a whole tutorial on my channel already, so you can check that out. Now, the PS3 has a unique architecture with the cell processor, and even now, consoles like the PS5, they don't emulate the PS3, the new service that's coming to it, just streams PS3 games from a server that I'm sure they're emulated over there, and then just stream to the PS5. So not even Sony is doing PS3 emulation on local hardware, but this emulator is pretty awesome. Unfortunately, it doesn't run the best on the Steam Deck, and I think we're CPU bound, and that's causing performance issues. I still wanna show off some of the uh, performance and games that run on here, and a little bit of setup to get it going if you use EmuDeck to install it. The games we're gonna look at are Demon Souls, Persona 5, one of the best games I've ever played, and finally Skate 3, a true classic. That's about it, let's jump into it. So we're gonna go ahead and install the firmware into the emulator to get this working. I'll leave the link below so you can use it to find the emulator. Once you use EmuDeck, this will just be installed and you can search for it and open the emulator itself. From here, go to File and Install Firmware. Then you're gonna to wanna to locate the firmware right here for me. Once we start installing the firmware, it's gonna go ahead and compile the PPU modules. This will take some time, but once it's done, you should be ready to go and you can boot up your games, drop them into the emulation folder you have for EmuDeck. Um, make sure to use the raw manager, you know, close Steam first, use the raw manager, generate the app list and save it. Then when you go back into game mode, the games will appear there. So I'll go ahead and speed through this and then we'll jump into some games here. One thing you might want to do is add this emulator to your Steam library. That way, when you're in game mode, you can configure settings without having to pop back into the desktop mode. Here, since I've run it already, it's easy for Steam to recognize that I can just add the selected program. And if I search it here, it'll pop up. And when we're over in game mode, it should pop up too. Now, there's a very specific reason I had you add RPCS3 to the game mode. And that's because if you launch a game, sometimes the controls just won't work. And here's how you can resolve that. Just open the emulator in game mode. And I mapped my right trackpad to be a mouse and the right, uh, if I click it on it, it uses the left click. If you just go to pads here and hit refresh, then hit save, or uh, you don't even need to hit save, I don't think. If you just refresh it in here and then close out of here by clicking the Steam button, and just exit game, and then opening up your other PS3 game, I've noticed that fixes the problem. So try that out if you're having problems. Once you've added your game to the emulation file for EmuDeck and use the raw manager to add it to Steam, you can launch it from the game mode. Here I have Demon's Souls booting up and this is gonna happen for all PS3 games on the Steam Deck and just in general. It's gonna go ahead and compile the PPU modules. Now, depending on the game, this will vary in length. For Demon's Souls, I think it took about 10 minutes. But for some of the other games I tested today, it took as little as five minutes. So it really just varies from game to game. So here we are in Demon Souls. And if you look at the frame time graph right now, it is all over the place. Pretty jittery. But one thing you might notice is in the bottom left, it says compiling shaders. So when you encounter a new effect or a lot of new things, a shader can compile. Uh, since we're using Vulcan, I believe it's real time shader compilation, just like DirectX 12. And. I think that will incur a performance penalty, just like if you notice for Unreal Engine 4 on the PC, there's a lot of stuttering. That's from real-time shader compilation, and something similar might be happening here, since we're not pre-caching the shaders. Using a different video backend might not have this problem, but it also might be a lot less performant than the Vulkan version here. So now we're in the game, and if you look at the CPU graph, you can notice one of our threads is just sitting at 100%. And that's going to be a pretty common occurrence between all the games we test out here. That being said, I think Demon's Souls is one of the more playable games out of uh, all the ones I've tested. It hits 30 FPS pretty frequently, but it's not super stable. Now, you might notice things flashing in and out of reality, and I think that's just due to the shader compilation also. Also, something that's pretty funny here is that my character is just missing their shield that's not present. There's a mod on Mod Nexus that can fix this for the emulator, but I don't have it installed because I was just interested in performance. Our GPU is also basically sitting at 100% most of the time, but I'm pretty sure we're just CPU bound here, and that is a major problem. Also, um, 
With this class, they start you off at a pretty high weight level, so you fat roll and you're not very agile, so I went ahead and unequipped some things, but pretty soon here, I'll jump to the part. I use the arc stone and I teleport, but when I teleport into the new location, it's just totally black. My screen's completely pitch black. It seems like there is some problem with the game, so... I didn't check the status on this game for uh, our PCS3, but I thought it was playable. It might not be totally good, there might be problems. Obviously there's the shield missing problem and stuff like that, so... I don't know if Demon Souls is really fully playable and enjoyable on the Steam Deck. And now as you can see here, we're totally engulfed in darkness. I can swing my sword and hear it hitting things and walk around and roll and hear it all, but nothing's visible to me at all. We're moving right along to what is one of my favorite games of all time, Persona 5. Unfortunately, we can't access the Royal Edition of the game because that's only available on the PS4. Persona 5 runs alright on the Steam Deck, and it helps out as a turn-based game with not a ton of fast-paced action that you need to deal with. There are a lot of cutscenes, cinematics, and dialogue in this game, which are all really enjoyable. Now, we're running right around 30 FPS for a good amount of this, but as you can see here right away, we get some interesting colors, and that's probably just due to the shaders compiling at that moment. Once they're actually compiled, we're in the game and it's looking alright, but if you look at the frame time graph, it is really jittery. For this game, if you've never played it before, they start you in Media Ray, so you start near the middle of the game, and then you go back to the beginning, and then you'll work your way back up to this point in the story and see what unfolds to get you there. Like I said, this is one of the best games I've ever played, and I would really highly recommend playing it. It is really unfortunate that it's not accessible on a handheld. If there was a 5 Royal port to the PC, I could tell you right away to go play it, and it would be the perfect fit for the Steam Deck. So here we're going to go ahead and jump into a battle sequence. As you can see, there's a cutscene. Uh, it's in the engine though, an engine cutscene. There are full anime cutscenes as well, so... I'll jump around the gameplay a little bit here to make sure that I show you guys, you know, this gameplay is working, the uh, in engine cutscenes are working, and the anime cutscenes are working. So overall, not terrible for a game like this to play here with the um, inconsistent performance, honestly. One last thing to note is that Persona 5 has one of the best video game soundtracks of all time. It's absolutely killer, there are a ton of songs. I think it adapts quite a few songs from Persona 3 and 4 and kind of updates them for 5. The art style, direction, and everything about this game is an absolute must play, so check it out! Guess the drug was too strong. Wake him up. No dozing off. You still don't get it, do you? Give him up! Come on, cooperate. What? You want another shot? Huh? What about the camera? Are you thinking it can be used as video evidence? So, you're not that dumb. Which is good. Because we get to take as much time as we need! <coughs> oh, oh, oh. 
obstruction of justice, blackmail, defamation, possession of weapons. Manslaughter too, yeah? We'll talk about the works. To think that all those crimes were led by a punk like this. And you seem to be enjoying every second of it. Now we're on the last game, Skate 3, an absolute classic, and we're all dying for Skate 4 out here. Now, unfortunately, this is probably the worst performing game I tested overall. You can see things are moving in slow motion, and if you look at the graphs on the left side, every single CPU thread slash core is just getting absolutely pounded by this game when running on the emulator, and we're 100% just bound by the CPU here. Now, I was trying to recall... I think Skate 3 ran out of unlocked frame rate on the PS3 and Xbox 360. I always put it on the 360, so I don't really know what the PS3 performance was like. But uh, I have an Xbox One, uh, Xbox Series X, and I think on there it runs at 60 FPS 4K, but obviously that's using different tech. And the Steam Deck here is trying to emulate a pretty unique architecture for the PS3, and we're absolutely seeing the effects of this. We can't keep up here. I'm sure if I tested this out on my 5900X, it would run no problem. But it's really unfortunate that this is the case. Now, we do get above 30 frames per second in some places. Like right there, we jumped to 42 FPS briefly. When I skate a little further down, I can see it go up to 40 briefly. But we're all over the place here. Running in absolute slow motion. And not much more to say beyond that. You can just check out some gameplay here and see what it runs like. Unfortunately, I have to use very select clips of the gameplay here because there is copyrighted music in Skate 3 and I don't want to get copyright struck, so I'm just going to go ahead and play those clips where no music's playing in the background.